Hey everyone, we're going to have a great time today as we talk about the power of God's grace. Here's the question, how much grace do you extend to others? How much grace do you want extended to you? You see, when we walk in grace, it enables us to carry the weight of our own imperfections. How does this happen? Well, because if we are walking with Jesus, then we know that we're forgiven. When we know that we're forgiven, it's also easier to accept the imperfections in others, and therefore, it makes it easier or even possible to extend grace to them. So before we dive into all of that, again, welcome everyone. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. I run RHM International Ministries. Just want to real quick invite you to go to the website. It is ruthhendrickson.org. You're going to find all sorts of resources, blogs, um, ways that you can connect with us, ways that you can grow in your walk with the Lord. And while you're there, join the family, sign up for the email list. We only send out one to two emails a week. I promise not to bombard you. But again, that website is ruthhendrickson.org. All right, back to grace, the power of grace. I always feel like you need to offer me grace as I do that intro each and every time. For those of you who listen all the time, thank you so much for your grace um, as I have to do that. So again, grace, how much grace do we extend to others and how much grace do we want extended to ourselves, right? So in Matthew 18, 21 to 35, we have the parable of the unforgiving debtor. And just because of time, I'm going to condense it. I'm going to give you Ruth's version of it. So my basis is out of the New Living Translation, but I'm going to really, um, really summarize it for you. So this whole parable actually comes as a response to a question that Peter asks. And it's really a great question. And I want you to know as he asks this question. It's actually a pretty famous question. Um, he thought he was being very generous. He thought that the, the way he was wording the question was really, really good. Okay. Uh, have you ever asked the Lord a question that you think it's really great questions? He's like, oh no, you're not thinking large enough. Okay. That's where Peter's at right near now. So Peter goes and he's, he's saying, okay, Lord, um, how, how often do I need to forgive somebody or how, how many times is seven times enough? And I can guarantee you, he's, he thinks he's spot on. He thinks it's right because that went above and beyond the religious understanding or the expectation of the day. And yet Jesus's response to him is what? It's 70 times seven, right? Okay, so he massively, massively increases where Peter's sight is at. Okay, he takes it to a whole, whole nother level. And with that, Jesus introduces this parable that we're going to talk about today. And so he tells of a king who decides to call in all the outstanding debt. Okay, he's going to balance his books. He's going to bring all the accounts up to date. And there's this one guy who comes in who owes him a lot of money. In fact, the New Living Translation says millions. He owes him millions of dollars. But this guy, he doesn't have the money. He can't pay off the debt. And so what would happen in this culture is if somebody couldn't pay off their debt, if he couldn't pay off what he owed the king, then not only would he be sold into slavery, but his wife, his children would also be sold into slavery. So his entire immediate family would be sold into slavery, and then all his possessions would be sold, and they would use this to pay off the debt. Okay, so again, the man, his wife, his children, all into slavery, everything he owns gets sold. That all goes into the king's treasury to pay off the debt. And what does the man do? Of course, he begs for mercy, right? He, okay, he begs for mercy. And the king actually has pity on him or another way I'm going to say that because of what we're talking about is he extends grace. And what he does is he releases this guy from his debt. Okay, he is like this. He is released in a moment. He's released from millions of dollars of debt. Why? Because the man asked, basically, as he asked, the heart of the king was moved. He had compassion on me, a pity on him. He gave grace and released the debt. But there was something that didn't connect within this man, as Jesus tells the parable. And so this man goes out. He should be happy. He should be rejoicing. He should be um, overwhelmed by the generosity of the king, by the grace that's been extended, by the favor that he found in the eyes of the king, that he didn't just get more time to pay the debt, he was released from the debt. And yet what happens is he goes 
And he runs into this guy who owes him a few thousand dollars. And the guy begs for mercy. And the man refuses. And what does he do? He has him thrown in prison. In other words, the grace, the, the massive, the huge amount of grace that was extended to him by the king. He was not willing to extend that to somebody else. What we see here is our tendency for extending grace to another, our pride, and sometimes even our demand for justice actually supersedes or causes us to forget what God himself has done for us, the grace that we receive, the grace that we walk in, the extravagant of his forgiveness. To put it bluntly, pride keeps us from admitting our faults and causes us to fall short of God's grace. And therefore, we don't offer God's grace to the world around. You know, I want to just take a little side note here and say one of the things that is so prevalent right now in the culture, at least here in America, is you don't love me if you don't fully agree with me. Okay, that's not that's not correct biblical standards. We love the person because they're created in the image of God, whether or not they know it, but it doesn't mean that we love or condone the sin in their life. Okay, very, very important to separate that out as we talk about this, okay, because we still, we measure by God's standards. We never, ever, ever water down the word of God, the command of God, the law of God, the safety nets of God. You know, he, he gives us these laws and these guardrails to keep us on the path, to keep us focused on him, to keep us safe, to keep us directed on him. So never can we use grace to, to go and make excuses that your know, behavior sin is okay very very important concept here so i wanted to enfold that in so that you're hearing this from the right spot because we never ever want to distort the word of god we never want to water down the word of god okay and sometimes this culture defines a word or a phrase and action and expectation what happens is we try to pull the culture into the word of god therefore watering down the word of god rather than to, to bringing the word of God into the culture, okay? Which means we radically love people because they're created in the image of God, but we do not condone behavior that does not align with the word of God, okay, period. That's, that's all there is to it. Okay, back into what we're talking about today. Hebrews 12, 15 reminds us to see that no one comes short of the glory of God, okay? No one, no one is to come short of the glory of God. There is a call for everyone to step into the glory of God. But you see, when we fall short of the glory of God, when we're not doing that, then what happens is this root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, right? Okay. And so with the original debtor in, this, in the parable that Jesus was talking about, the one who had owed millions, he fell short of the grace of God when he allowed a root of bitterness to take hold. The fruit of this the fruit of that root of bitterness is the way that he treated the man who owned him thousands. You see, he effectively blamed the man for not being able to pay. And with that, he used it to justify his wrong action. And he can even use it to reconcile any twinge of guilt because he justifies a way based on his feelings, forgetting about the grace of God or the grace of the king that was offered to him. You see, if bitterness comes into our lives and remi remains unchecked, it will always result in trouble. So think about this. The man, again, was forgiven a massive debt, but he refused to pay that forward. To use a really popular term, he didn't pay it forward. He didn't forgive the man who owed him a much smaller debt than the one he had been forgiven. Now, if we go back, the king hears what's happened. You know, the rumors start flying and the king hears what has happened and he goes. And even though he'd forgiven the debt, he goes and he sends that man to prison. Not only does he send that man to prison, it doesn't say he sent his wife or his children. Jesus didn't include that part in his parable in the story. The man was sent to prison, not just sent to prison, but the king said he was put in prison to be tortured until he paid his debt. You see, the truth is, if we're not experiencing and fully embracing the grace God has extended towards us, the grace he's extended towards you, then we're not going to give that grace to, each, to, the, to others, right? We're going to instead demand that they're perfect. In other words, we're not giving away what the Lord has so graciously and wonderfully and extravagantly given to us. We're operating. We want the fullness of grace in our own lives. 
but if pride, if bitterness, if, if, you know, some of these uh, just, just judgmental things rise up within us and are not aligned with the word of God, the fullness of God, not tempered by what God has done for us, then we actually respond out of the wrong heart, out of the wrong attitude, which is what this man did. So what happens again is rather than giving grace to others, we demand perfection out of them. So I want to wrap this up because we're out of time, but Eddie Ranzik makes a statement and he says, grace enables us to carry the weight of our own imperfections because we know that although we are imperfect, we are also forgiven. Admitting our imperfections makes it easier to accept the imperfections of others. In other words, it enables us to offer grace in the level, in the measure that grace has been extended to us. So back to the questions that I began with, how much grace do you extend to others? How are you doing with that, with that grace? Are you, are you extravagant with it? Are you, are you functioning from, from the understanding of how much grace God has extended to you? Which brings us to the next question. How much grace has God extended to you? It's amazing. It's phenomenal. It's large. It's huge. It's wider and deeper than we can ever know. So how do we pass that on to the world around us? We model what the Lord did for us, but we always stay based. That foundation is always, always, always on the word of God. Always. So Heavenly Father, just come. Lord, thank you for your grace. We praise you for your grace. Thank you for all you have done for us. God, you're amazing. You're good. You're, oh, that you would love us so much. Oh, that you sent your only son, that you forgive our sins. In fact, you remove our sins as far as the east is from the west from us. We can't even touch them. We can't even touch them. That's, that's, you don't keep a record. You're not, you're not checking it off. You're not keeping a, another set of books up there. You take those sins and you say, you are forgiven. I want you to hear that right now. Some of you guys need to know right now, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. God's grace extends to you. Come, you are forgiven. And Lord, on the grace that you have so extravagantly poured out to us, Lord, let us extend it to others. Let us help others to see who you are. Let us radiate the very image of you as we go through life, extending that grace. Let them see us walking in the fullness, not as a hypocrite, but walking in the fullness and extending your grace and your mercy and your love to others. God, we love you so much. We just say thank you, thank you, thank you. We just worship you for who you are. Lord, thank you for that grace. God, we so don't deserve it, and yet you poured it out anyways. So, Lord, we just say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I want to encourage you again, if this has blessed you, please share it. Please tell others about it. And the best way you can do that is when you go to share it, if you're using a platform where you could put a note on it, where you can attach something, go ahead and say, listen to this because, or this blessed me because I know it'll bless you. Go ahead and share it. We want people to know that there is hope that they have a future, that God is for them and not against them, that there is so much more to this life than what we can see, that we don't have to be wrapped up or, or sinking in the chaos and the confusion, or the sin, the guilt, the doubt. But God is a God of grace. He has wonderful plans and purposes for each one of us. And we want to see each one of us walk in it, but also those around us walk into who God's called them to be. It is good. It is possible. He is for you. He is not against you. So on that, have a great day. Be so blessed. And I'll see you next time.